Hey, what's up guys? So as you saw with the intro clips, Eula's here and she's pretty sick. Eula is a great physical carry who deals a lot of consistent physical DPS, but also has great burst damage and is, in my opinion, very well balanced. Because while she is a great carry, uh, she does have some weaknesses which you have to consider and build a team around, build your character around in order to make her shine uh, and reach her max potential. So obviously we're going to cover those in this video and I'm going to explain everything you need to know about Eula in as much detail as possible without taking too long. I've been testing her since she came out on the Asia server many, many hours ago. I've been up for a very long time with the help of Zajef77, so huge shout out to him. And overall, I'm very impressed with Eula, and I think she's a very well-balanced unit. And I do want to clarify right away why I think not only she's well-balanced and very strong, but also why she's free-to-play friendly, despite some people saying otherwise. Anyways, though, I want to keep my intro short, so I want you guys to know that I stream almost every night on Twitch. Link in the description if you're interested. Be sure to sub if you're new, and let's get right into the video. So I want to start things off with one of, if not the most important section. Regarding what everyone's been asking about Eula, I want to talk about how strong I think she is, because I think she's a very good unit. And also I want to explain why I think she's very free-to-play friendly. First of all, Eula is basically a hyper carry, where she's the one doing most of the damage in her team. On top of that, as you'll see in the team comp section near the end, a lot of her like core supports are not only 4-star units, but also like 4-star units that were either free or given free in an event. So not only are our teams very accessible, but they're also very flexible. Furthermore, she has very good free-to-play options for like weapons with prototype archaic and snow tombed. And she also doesn't need like highly contested supports. Some of the best supports in the game that a lot of teams want, right? Like Bennett, like Xing Chu, aren't needed by Eula. So you can run them in your second abyss team. And I find that that's a pretty big strength, making her even better than she already is and very free-to-play friendly, especially if you're on a limited amount of characters. Building a Eula team is very easy and you can save some of your high priority supports for your other team. And I think overall Eula's very good and I consider her to be the best physical carry, which is saying a lot, especially because in the current Abyss, physical damage is very good. So I think Eula's a pretty amazing unit overall. With that out of the way, I want to talk about everything you need to know about Eula in this video. And we're going to start with her talents, combos, and general information you need to know to play Eula efficiently. So first of all, for Eula's talents, her elemental skill can either be pressed or held. Basically, when you tap it, it has a lower cooldown and deals a bit less damage than if you were to hold. But it is a decent amount of damage and it stacks something called Grimheart. Grimheart can stack up to two times. When you get it, it uh, increases your resistance to interruption, but it mainly uh, allows you to consume stacks with your hold. Basically, you're going to be stacking it with your press, and then you hold it to unleash the stacks, dealing cryo damage, but also shredding physical and cryo uh, resistance of enemies. And on top of that, holding E procs her first passive, which deals 50% of the basic physical damage of your burst. That means it does 50% of this base damage, which is a very high number that goes up significantly with talent levels. So usually you're gonna be pressing till you have two stacks and then holding it to unleash those stacks. Keep in mind your elemental burst, which we'll talk about right now, does give you one stack because of this second talent. What that means is to get the two stacks to hold, all you need to do is press once and then use your burst, which means for an optimal rotation, you can do one press E, then use your burst, which resets your E because of this talent and gives you a stack. And then you can hold your E, unleashing the damage, shredding the physical res and cryo res, and proccing your talent. I know I sort of talk fast there, but basically you can just E, Q, and then E, hold, uh, and you'll do the max damage. For your elemental burst, they basically wrote a short story as a description, so I'm going to summarize it for you guys. First of all, she'll deal cryo damage with the initial hit, and then there'll be a sword around her that charges up. This sword will charge up with every normal attack, charge attack, elemental skill, and your burst damage, and all those charge the lightfall sword, which can gain an energy stack every 0.1 seconds. What that means is during your burst, you're going to be spamming your auto attacks and skill, and you're going to effectively be charging this up. And when it explodes at the end, it has this base damage, which is very high at talent level 7. And then it also gains over 100% damage per stack, which is every time you do like a normal attack or anything like that. And you guys will see in the showcase, but the damage on this burst is actually really high. Like I can actually one shot bosses while still building her as like a consistent DPS, just damaging, you know, consistently. And then the burst comes in and destroys everything. Also, keep in mind, this explodes after 7 seconds or when you swap characters, which means you want to ideally stay on field on her to stack it as much as possible and not like swap out early, making her a somewhat selfish hyper carry. The only problem with this is her energy cost of 80, which is very high. However, in the 20 second cooldown, if you build her uh, with enough ER on substats and if you run a cryo battery, so someone like Diana, someone like Rosaria, another cryo character with her, which we'll cover in the team comp section, 
you can get around her sort of high energy cost and make her energy problems really not that big of a deal if you plan accordingly. Also, regarding her burst, something very important that I want to mention is that for some reason, during the animation of your Q, which is like a cutscene, you don't actually gain particles um, from any abilities you could have casted before. So with a lot of abilities, you can do something like E, and then while the particles are flying to you, you press your burst, and then you start with some particles, right? But with Eula, that doesn't work. Um, when you, you're using your burst, you don't actually like spend the particles initially, so you don't get new ones uh, that were flying to you while the animation was happening. Overall, Eula's kit is pretty amazing though. An amazing burst, really good passives, especially this one, and a pretty good elemental skill that shreds resistances. For your normal attacks, I want you guys to know that the optimal combo is usually doing four hits. The two hits pretty good too. Doing all six though is usually a waste of time because of how long it is. Lastly, regarding your talent priority, normal attacks and burst are usually similar uh, in terms of worth and your elemental skill is last. So I would usually level uh, normal attacks and burst at the same time, like one and then the other and then your elemental skill uh, in the end. Now we're going to talk about Eula's artifact sets, and I do first of all want to talk about the Pale Flame, because there are a lot of questions regarding this, notably if you can keep the uptime all the time or not. First of all, what this set does is the two-piece gives you 25% physical damage, and then the four-piece will double your two-piece, so giving you 50% damage, physical damage total, and also giving you 18% attack if you can fully stack this set. Now we have extensively tested rotations to try to maintain this uptime and if you are doing optimal rotations and if you are focusing on maintaining this uptime even without constellations you can do it and then four piece pale flame will be the best however it, it can be hard to proc the four piece but again if you are playing her optimally if you're using you know your tap ease and focus on getting this uptime you can keep it up all the time making it the best dps set overall However, you can also run two Pale Flame with two Bloodstained, giving you the 50% physical damage bonus always with no conditions, but making you lose out on the 18% attack that the four-piece Pale Flame can provide to you. For that reason, I would recommend running whichever has better substats. That being said, I do still recommend the four Pale Flame overall. If not, you can run two Pale Flame with two Bloodstained for similar damage percent from the set effects. Regarding her specific artifact stats though, there's a lot of sort of misinformation about this right now, so I do want to clarify it, clarify what you should be looking for and how much ER you usually need, but again, that obviously depends on your teams. So first of all, Eula, as with every DPS character, really wants crit, so crit damage and crit rate are both very good, and attack percent also increases your damage. Apart from that though, she's a character who does need energy recharge because of her 80 cost burst. Now the exact amount of ER you need, and how much you should be building on every piece, substats and all that, highly depends on your team comps. I always recommend, and I'll talk about this in the party comp section, running a cryo battery for your Eula, so another cryo character generating cryo particles, and then you can swap into Eula to catch them to gain a lot of energy. Running a team like that with efficient batteries for Eula, the amount of energy recharge you need isn't that high. However, that is with like optimal rotations and stuff, so if you're playing more casually, you might want more um, than what I run. But a general range is literally anywhere between 140 to like 170 ER. I was running the low end of 140 and I was doing fine, but that was with optimizing my rotations and trying to do everything perfectly. But for a lot of people, you might need more ER. I would say to feel it out with your team and your personal rotations. But overall though, you are looking for crit, ER, and some attack percent as a general rule. For your main stats, First of all, for your goblet, you want physical goblet. Uh, if you're running a cryo Eula for some reason with Chong Yun, you can consider cryo, but overall, physical Eula is just the way to go. For your circlet, you want either crit damage or crit rate, trying to get a balanced ratio. So the general rule is one to two, uh, crit rate to crit damage. And for your sands, this is where people are going to give different opinions, basically attack percent or energy recharge. I am always of the mindset that if you have enough energy recharge on your substats, or even weapon, um, having an attack percent sans is more damage, and if you can get away with it, it's worth it. I believe that energy recharge sans for Eula is a solution to the problem of not having enough ER, but it isn't optimal. That means that getting ER substats is usually the way to go, but if you don't have enough, if you're not having enough ER, you can run an energy recharge sans and get away with it. Now let's talk about Eula's weapons, and there are a lot of great ones for literally any player. Even if you're free to play, there are some great options for Eula. And I do first of all want to mention that I'm on an Asia account right now, so it's not like my typical weapons, which is why like my Serpent Spine is only level 80. Uh, but that shouldn't matter anyways. So as I mentioned like twice already, she does have amazing free-to-play options, uh, mostly because she is a Claymore character, which already has good options with Archaic, and for physical characters, even Snow Tombed can be a good option. Now, a lot of people ask which one's better between Archaic and Snow Tombed, and it's one of the things I've been testing the most, and my conclusion is that they're both very similar. Archaic, because of the effect, and this being able to hit multiple enemies more reliably, is more consistent, but Snow Tombed, if you can consistently proc the effect, can be more damage. Because of that, and given the DPS overall of both of them, I believe they are both very similar and comparable. 
However, Archaic is more consistent. That being said, and I know this doesn't matter, but I really like how Snowtomb looks with Eula. I find it matches her aesthetic, um, but again, that doesn't really matter. And so overall, I recommend Archaic as your free-to-play option. Her best 4-star though, if you uh, do buy the battle pass, is the Serpent Spine. This is an amazing weapon for literally every Claymore character. You've heard me talk about it in like every video. Basically, and this is only level 80, so keep in mind these stats do go up. But when it's maxed out, you gain 27 crit rate, which is really good. And a very good effect, giving you 6% more damage uh, times 5. Like 6% for every stack, and it can stack up to 5 times. And on top of that, to make sure you don't lose these stacks, because you do lose them when you take some damage, you can just run a shield, protecting your Serpent Spine and your character, making it an amazing, amazing option, and what I recommend for your best 4-star. That being said, regarding your 5-stars, they're actually all pretty similar in strength. I would just recommend, instead of ranking each of them, to run whichever 5-star you have. Now, if you have multiple and you're wondering which one to go, I think it depends on you and your substats. Song of Broken Pines and Wolf's Gravestone are both similar. Wolf's buffs your whole team, whereas Pines gives you more damage to your Eula, and they're both very good options. Scoured Pride, however, is great, and especially if you need energy recharge, so if you don't have enough, Slapping a Skyward Pride and getting more crit substats can be great. And Skyward Pride has an effect that scales off of physical damage, so it's great for Eula. It also has a very high base attack, and as I mentioned, it can help solve your energy recharge problems. And there's also the Unforged Claymore, which is a stat stick. And so for that reason, I really like all 5-star Claymores for Eula, and I rank them similarly, and think you can run literally any of them. But again, Eula does not need 5-star weapons to be good. Constellation-wise, I have none because I didn't invest in Dogecoin. And very quickly, I want you guys to know that Eula, all my testing on her has been C0, and everything I say about her is concerning a C0 Eula. I think Eula is a very strong unit at C0. However, she does have good constellations, but they are by no means necessary. Her C1 and 2 are the most interesting ones. Her C1 basically gives you more physical damage percent for 6 seconds, but it's for every stack you consume. Usually you'll consume 2, which gives you 12 second uptime. Uh, but then if you E again after it, it can go to a maximum of 18 seconds. But since you can gain a lot of physical damage bonus from other sources, this can hit diminishing returns and not be as good as it seems, but it's still a pretty good constellation. C2 is also good and can help you maintain Pale Flame uptime and can let you use your hold E more because it does give a good amount of particles and has a nice effect, especially with the talent. If you don't know, C2 makes your hold cooldown identical to your press cooldown, and this is a pretty good constellation as well. C1 and 2 are pretty good. 3 and 5 increase your talent levels. Your constellation 4 is a slight damage buff against opponents with less than 50% HP, which is pretty good but not necessary. And this paired with C6 is basically why you guys see so many whales doing huge burst damage. Um, C6 basically just buffs your ult again. It allows you to fully stack your sword, get all 30 stacks if you um, if you can proc it, right? It'll give you 5 stacks at the start, and then every time you do anything, so normal attack, skill, or burst, you have a 50% chance to generate another stack of energy, which can let you fully stack it and deal more damage with your burst. Overall, her constellations are good, but you shouldn't feel forced to spend on them because at C0 she's very good, but I do think C1 and 2 are pretty good. Now we're going to get into one of, if not the most important section, which is Eula's teams. This is excessively important because running her with good teams lets you basically run less energy recharge, have good rotations, and maximize the damage you're going to be dealing. Also, as I mentioned early in the video, Eula's teams are very free-to-play friendly, and since she is sort of a hyper carry, you don't need to invest too much into your supports to where you can reach your damage ceiling or start doing a lot of damage very early on just by investing into Eula without having to over-invest or hyper-invest into your supports. That being said though, let's get into it. So Eula's teams generally want, first of all, a cryo battery. And the reason for that is because her burst costs so much energy, you would usually want to have another cryo character to generate cryo particles which you can catch on Eula so that you don't need to build a ton of energy recharge on her. A lot of different crowd characters work for this. I usually recommend Diona, Rosaria, or Kea, all of which are five stars and two of which are free. Well, Kea is always free. Diona was given for free in the event literally a week ago. And Rosaria is the, the sort of non-free option. I think all three are good and have their strengths. Most people run Diona and it's what I usually recommend because her shield is great and very comfy. She gives you a lot of healing and generates a lot of particles. On top of that, you can run her with either a Favonius or a Sacrificial Bow, which both make you generate even more particles. And obviously the Favonius Warbow is a free-to-play option, which you get from a quest, generating white particles for the entire team. It's sort of the same logic with Rosaria, and I really like Rosaria because she can run Favonius Lance, which uh, has a very high chance of proccing because her elemental skill hits twice. So even at low refinement, you can proc this uh, semi-reliably, and she'll generate a ton of particles for your team, as well as giving you crit rate and doing a pretty good amount of damage. So I generally recommend running a Cryo Battery with Eula, and on top of that, you do get the uh, Cryo Resonance, when you run two crowd characters. Apart from that, I almost always recommend Fischl. 
Um, basically an electro character that can superconduct, but Fischl especially is just like the best one. I found that she synergizes very well with Eula. First of all, she'll deal a ton of damage, especially through Oz, and if you can trigger uh, reactions with your A4, it does a lot. And on top of that, if you have Fischl constellations, she gets even better. And as a bonus, Fischl is also a pretty good battery for your entire team. So the core comp, as I mentioned, is usually Fischl and a cryo battery. So Diona, Kea, Rosaria, something like that. And then the last character is Flex. That means there are many, many different support options that you can run on the fourth slot. And what's really nice about Eula, in my opinion, is she doesn't need characters that every other team needs. For example, a Diluc team, a Hu Tao team, uh, a lot of teams in this game want characters like Xing Chu or even Bennett, right? Very high value supports that you can use on your other Abyss team. Eula doesn't need them. Eula doesn't synergize particularly well with either of them. Um, you know, Bennett can still be good with her, but I argue that one of Eula's biggest strengths is being able to use those high value support characters on other teams, making her even better than she seems. And keep in mind, while this is sort of Eula's core, it's like the standard comp, but there are different options, which I'll talk about in a bit. But for this team, your last character can be someone like Zhongli for a good shield and resistance shred. It can also be Beidou, but she does have some negative synergy, mainly because her burst um, you're going to use her burst and then use Eula's burst. But since Eula's Q animation is so long, you will lose some procs of Beto burst, making it a bit less valuable than we thought uh, pre-release. But she can still be a pretty good option. You can run Venti if you need him to clump enemies. Same thing with other Animo characters. Albedo can be a pretty good option just because it's Albedo and he's good in almost any team. Passive damage through your E as well as a battery uh, of particles constantly. And if your other team doesn't need Bennett, you can also run him because he just basically gives you more damage, which is always good. On top of that, if you do run someone like Bennett or if you do run someone like Zhongli, if you have either a form of healing or a strong enough shield, uh, that does allow you to replace Diona if you want to with a character like Rosaria or Kea. Lastly, you can also run a Geo Resonance team, but this one requires two five stars and is usually less damage and superconduct uh, with good burst supports. But it can be a good option um, because you can run double cryo, double geo, get both resonances, and deal a pretty good amount of damage. Lastly, people are going to inevitably ask about Shen Yan, so I feel like I should give my opinion right now. She has positive synergy with Eula. You can play her if you like her because of that, because of the passive giving 15% increased physical damage bonus and her C4 if you have it, which is expensive, shredding physical resistance. However, overall, I don't think it's worth it. This doesn't even have 100% uptime and the res shred uh, is going to be stacking with superconduct and your hold E, so you don't need more physical resistance shred. And overall, she usually isn't worth the slot compared to other support characters. However, there is positive synergy with her and Eula, so if you do want to play her, you can. I just don't recommend her personally. So as you guys can see, her comps are very flexible and mostly free to play friendly, especially with Fischl and uh, another cryo battery who is a four star. I believe Eula is extremely free to play friendly. Now for her other play styles, I'm going to go over these briefly. Uh, if you want to run like Cryo Eula, you just slap Chong Yan on the team. However, it is less damage than physical, so I don't recommend it. And if you do want to run a Reverse Melt Eula, again, I don't think it's that great, mainly because you can't like spam her burst and her Cryo damage isn't super huge. But a Reverse Melt team, if you want to run it, would look something like this. And now we're going to do a Eula DPS showcase. Keep in mind, I am C0. I'm using my main account now. I'm on NA. And we're going to be doing the normal stuff. So Abyss 11, Abyss 12, and a bunch of bosses. One-shotting the bosses, but also doing consistent DPS in 11 and 12. So it's a mix of consistent DPS and burst DPS uh, in the showcase. That being said, I hope the guide was helpful, and I hope you enjoyed the showcase. Let's go. My progress. Oh, I missed a bunch of hits. Yeah, I guess I won't. But like, I do a lot of damage with my autos. Oh, wait.
So overall, I really like Eula. I find her extremely satisfying to play and very strong. I love how much damage her burst deals. She's a pretty consistent, strong physical carry with a great burst uh, as well. She does have some drawbacks, notably being having a high energy cost. But if you build a proper team around her, give her a cryo battery and gear her correctly, it's not too big of a deal. You can play around it. And I think overall, she's a pretty amazing physical carry. Also, for the many reasons I listed earlier, I do think she's very free-to-play friendly. Anyways, I hope this guide was helpful and maybe helped you make your mind on Eula, whether you like her or not, and hopefully you learned uh, how to build her and how to play her properly. I don't normally ask for likes or anything, but I did spend so long on this video. I haven't slept in like actually forever. So if you did like it, it would mean a lot. Let me know. But that being said, I'm going to go sleep and stuff. If you're new, be sure to sub, join the Discord, all that stuff, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.